So this uh, normality basically defines your concentration or tells the concentration in terms of your equivalents, not in terms of moles. So we had molarity which was giving you, molarity was number of moles per unit volume. Normality will be how many equivalent moles are there per unit volume. And rightly so, it, uh, I mean it's a better way of describing the concentration. Like if you have a two molar H2SO4, it means two moles of H2SO4 in one liter of it. So two molar H2SO4. How many equivalents of H2SO4 is there? How how this this acid is how much equivalent in one HCl in one sorry one liter? You have got two moles of H2SO4, but we have got four H pluses in that one liter. It is as good as four molar HCl. Now this I know that two moles of H2SO4 is as good as four moles of H, uh, four molar HCl because both of them are going to furnish four H pluses in one liter in one liter of uh, water. So if I'm going to use this acid as an acid neutralizing some uh, base, then if I use two molar or four mol two molar H2SO4 or four molar HCl, it would be the same thing. So if it is the same thing, why not describe them with the same concentration? So when I have to describe them with the same concentration, I'll see how many equivalents are there. Two moles in one liter is as good as four equivalents in one liter. Here also it is four moles of HCl in one liter, four moles of HCl, one mole is as good as one equivalent of HCl. So four moles will be four equivalents. So again, it will be four equivalents in one liter. So both of them basically are four equivalents per liter so that is called four normal that's the normality so we'll just define over here so what i'm trying to say is giving you in terms of normality is a good way even though we'll not be using much of it in this part of the chapter where we can take use of moles and do the balancing and do the reaction because the balancing will be quite simple but when we start doing redox then the balancing will be a little tricky for those questions so we see that normality is a good way of describing the concentration we actually get how much of uh, acidic or basic strength the solution is going to have uh, but in this part of the chapter we can do with moles because we can find out the number of moles and check out the balancing like one NaOH reacted with uh, half of H2SO4 and we can see the ratio and we can do it. So first we will concentrate on getting uh, getting uh, comfortable with the number of moles and then, uh, then uh, we will go on to equivalence. Equivalence will actually be required when the balancing will become tough. The balancing will become tough when you start using redox. When the redox reaction comes, okay, I forgot to mention one more thing. Equivalence in terms, equivalence of salts when redox reaction is happening. Now, what is a redox reaction? In a redox reaction, one of the molecule is losing electrons and the other molecule is gaining those electrons. The one which has lost the electron is said to be oxidized and the one which has gained the electron is said to be reduced. So that's your redox reaction that was not happening in a double displacement reaction. There was no loss or gain of electron. It was just exchange of ions like you have NaOH say with HCl. Now what is happening is OH goes with H forms HOH which is your water and your Na goes with Cl forms NaCl. So the valency of Na remains plus 1 in NaCl also the valency will be plus 1. Cl was minus 1 here in HCl in NaCl also minus 1. So the valencies are not changing. Your uh, oxidation state is not changing if the valency is not changing. In a redox reaction the oxidation state changes. So I will comment on oxidation state and oxidation number when we go on to the redox chapter. So for now we have just left the equivalence in uh, for redox. I'll just define it for you. The definition will be uh, equivalence of a molecule which is undergoing redox will be the x factor into the number of moles of the substance. So what will be the x factor? The x factor will be how many electrons 
it gains or loses per molecule electrons lost or gained per molecule so that's your x factor in a redox reaction in other reactions they were not losing and gaining electrons so we were checking out with the basis basicity acidity and the net uh, charge but in a redox reaction they are losing electron and gaining ele electron so just to give you an idea say a b this one molecule when it undergoes the reaction it loses two electrons now b gains one molecule gains one electron one molecule of b gains one electron understand this carefully a loses two electrons if if uh, if one molecule is undergoing redox it loses two electrons if b is undergoing that in, is involved in that redox reaction it gains one electron so electrons can't be flying out of the reaction if it has a has lost two electrons there has to be somebody who has to gain those two electrons so we'll require two of the b's so to balance it we'll have one a reacting with two b that's your normal balancing so when you balance it you will see that on uh, equating the number of atoms on the left hand side and right hand side you will eventually end up with 1a reacting with 2b now what the point of doing an equivalence was one equivalence of a will always react with one equivalence of b that is what we were saying and we need not balance it so what will be the equivalence of a if there's one a then how many equivalence so each molecule is losing two electrons so the equivalence will be two into the number of moles so one mole into two so that's your two that's your two and that's your number of moles one so how many equivalents there were two equivalents of a and for b how many equivalents two b's are there so number of moles is two b is having number of moles as two and the number of electrons it gains per molecule per molecule it gains one electron so equivalence of that was also one into two that was one into two which has two equivalence what we are seeing is two equivalence of a reacts with two equivalence of b that means one equivalence of a reacts with one equivalence of b so if you know the x factor if you know the x factor then we need not balance it so if the x factor of a certain species say c reacts with d x factor of c is three and x factor of b is say five that means b gains or loses five electrons per molecule and three loses or gains the vice versa three electrons per molecule but electrons have to be balanced electrons can't go uh, to some other thing the the electrons lost by say c is gained by b so we need to have uh, we need to have five times the c means 15 five c's so 15 electrons it will lose and there has to be something which can gain that those 15 electrons so we'll have three of b's each b can gain five electrons so we'll have 15 electrons gained 15 lost and 15 gained so we have five c's and loses 15 electrons so per c it loses three electrons so the x factor for c was three x factor for b was five number of equivalents over here would be 3 into 5, 5 moles and 3 x factor. So 3 x factor and 5 moles, which is 15. This would be 5 x factor, 3 moles, which is again 15. 15 equivalents and 15 equivalents. So this part we are going to do in redox. So we, we are not bothering much about this fourth formula for getting the equivalent this is the first formula this is the second formula this is the third formula i hope it is coming in the screen this is the fourth formula so anyways getting to the fact that yes representation in number of equivalents is a better way of understanding uh, the stoichiometry of the reaction but we we'll leave it aside for a while uh, for doing calculations but we need to know the term and uh, what it means so that we can convert normality to molarity and do it in our old way of uh, doing the question for this chapter and later on chapter we'll convert the molarity to normality to do it in the equivalence way just to emphasize the fact of equivalence and uh, uh, one example i'll tell you it's a gross example there's a there's one person is a big fat person one person 
and he has to travel on flight. So when he sits on the flight, he occupies two seats. But while booking the ticket, he says, I am one man. I am one man and he buys one ticket. So that's uh, that's uh, uh, pretty unfair because on the flight, he's, he'll be occupying two seats and the person next to him won't, won't be able to sit. So in fact, one, one fat man, one fat man was equivalent to two equivalent two equivalent men so we don't have a ticket booking system in terms of equivalents but the thing is this one big molecule or one big molecule or one big uh, species is as good as two equivalent species so this was say your h2so4 I had drawn earlier so these are the equivalents of h2so4 these are the two equivalents of h2so4 can you do a question there is another term i just skipped that the term is equivalent equivalent weight now what's equivalent weight equivalent weight is the weight of one equivalence of a substance so before me telling you can you tell me what will be the equivalent weight of h2 so four so you have to get me the weight of one equivalent of h2so4 so that was your h2so4 molecule which was 98 grams one mole was 98 grams or one molecule was 98 amu now that, that one mole is two equivalent moles so what will be the weight of each both of them would be 49 49 each of them would be 49 grams so the mass you cannot define mass the mass is conserved one mole one mole is as good as two equivalents the mass of one mole was 98 mass of each equivalent is 49 so the total mass remains same so we have more number of equivalents than the moles you have lesser mass of each equivalent because those are divided moles so that's your equivalent weight yeah, so if you have understood this, let's write the equivalent weight of H2SO4 in a formula form. Your equivalent weight would be equal to the molecular weight, a fraction of it, meaning to say that molecule is, or the mole is divided into how many parts to get the equivalent. It is divided into the valence factor part. This is X, X is your, this thing. Okay, I'll write, I'll write, your equivalence is equal to x times the number of moles. So it represents all the four formula x for acid is the basicity, x for the base is the acidity, x for a salt is the net charge. So x is basically that one big fat molecule is divided into how many parts? Like HCl x is one. X, x is one for HCl because it is it is it is one one molecule is as good as one it is no no not divided h2so4 x is two because that is a but i'll term it as a big fat molecule it is divided into two h3po4 is divided into three so the total weight would be divided into so many parts so mo molar weight divided by x so in this case it is 98 divided by two which is 49 so equivalent weight of a mole we are referring to a mole all the time so it is 9, 49 grams so if it is uh, of a molecule that will be 49 amu but equivalent is for the moles it was uh, it is called gram equivalents by the way that gram as i told you earlier that capital g gram means mole equivalents so that is referring to the moles so i'll write a formula for that somewhere let me write it over here equivalent weight is almost same as molar weight but if the molecule is divided into x parts an equivalent weight is molar weight divided by x now to get the net weight to get the net weight the total weight or total mass of a substance we can have number of moles into the molar weight gives you the total mass of the substance in grams can we have number of equivalents into the equivalent weight just think over it is this also all right will it give you the total weight so basically what was equivalence equivalence was x times more than n your equivalence was 
n times x because the molecule was divided into x parts and the total equivalence became so many like h2so4 was divided into two parts so n moles of h2so4 is twice into n equivalence of h2so4 so many and the weight of each part is less it is less by x so basically if we cancel it out it is we are getting the same thing the total weight so the total weight is either number of equivalents into the equivalent weight or number of moles into the molar weight to just emphasize this quickly again if you have three moles of h2so4 get the weight of h2so4 so either we can say three moles into 98 which i'll prefer we do this way so 3 into 98 is the net weight or it will be equal to how many equivalents it was three moles was six equivalents it was six equivalents and weight of each equivalence was 49 so you'll get the same thing the number of equivalents was double the number of moles but the weight was half the molar weight so whether we do this or this we get the uh the same same thing so we get the same weight so formula very similar to this we can write if you have net weight hardly you'll be using this in this part so if you have got net weight as g and we divide with the equivalent weight then we'll get the number of equivalents i'll rather prefer not using this formula and get the number of moles and multiply with x factor to get the number of equivalents get the number of moles right you just this, this chapter is called mole concept keep your concentration on number of moles equivalence was actually uh, is actually primitive we are using this but equivalence was actually primitive they when they did not know the atomic structure and all they they used to compare with one gram of hydrogen is reacting with how much or 35.5 grams of chlorine is reacting with how much and that was called the equivalence but it is quite useful in the redox so we'll come back to this equivalence in the redox for now we'll stick to moles so quick question on, on equivalent weight find the equivalent weight of calcium hydroxide how much so do that quickly so i hope you got that right equivalent weight of calcium hydroxide will be the molar weight of calcium hydroxide divided by 2 because the x factor for calcium hydroxide is 2 it uh, furnishes 2 hydroxyl ions so what's the molar weight of uh, calcium hydroxide that is 40 for calcium and 2 into 17 plus 2 into 17 for hydroxyl so 34 plus 40 divided by 2 which is 20 plus 17 which is 37 37 grams is your answer so i hope you have understood equivalent equivalent weight also what is equivalent weight so now let us move on to normality